A young man with messy hair and a killer look in his eyes approaches the school. He has an army of gangsters behind him. His eyes are cold and angry. He is ready to get revenge on everyone. This is our protagonist and his name is Yim Daejun. Now we will learn how he got to this point and what drove him to become this dangerous person. It all started in a regular high school. With normal life comes hardships and I'm Daejun has something that makes every day horrible and hard. He is bullied all the time. He is small, scared, and does not know how to defend himself. Lee Doyen is the guy who bullies him. He does not stop now for one day. This has been going on for years. Even on his birthday, I'm does not have peace. Lee drags him to the school roof and beats him up there, gives him a disgusting cake and takes photos of him while making fun of him. This has been going on for far too long and finally An has a plan to stop it. He plans to end his own life very soon. We see Yim writing a note to his parents and basically talking about Lee and how he made him end his own life. Am plans to do it in a few days. He just wants to say goodbye to his family. After suffering another brutal beating in school, Am goes back home. He tries to talk with his family but nobody seems to care. His mother is at work, his father only cares about the tea, and his brother and sister only think about their studies. Then something odd happens. There is a news report that talks about a student who ended the lives of his bullies. This student is Mud Jum and he screams on the television he tells every victim of bullying to not give up and to take the life of their bullies. In that moment, Yim gets inspired why she end his own life. He should punish the bullies and end theirs. That night, Yim tries to get ready. He is going to attack Lee tomorrow and finally stop all of this. Then the morning comes and Aim has to go to school. His plan falls apart, and the moment Lee starts to harass him, he freezes up. Yim is just too scared and traumatized. Lee starts to beat him up brutally, then after school things get much worse. Lee and his friends take Yim to a secluded area and give him horrible drinks filled with dirt and trash. They force him to drink this over and over again. Yim starts to throw up and he feels horrible. Lee plans to murder Aim and he is going to torture him in the process. Finally, Aim loses it and he runs away. Lee chases after him and when he catches him, he starts to beat him up. In a moment of desperation, Yim pushes Lee into the road. Lee does not notice a giant truck coming right at him. Moments later, the ambulance arrives and it seems that Lee has been hit by the truck. Yim, on the other hand, is in shock. He cannot believe what just happened and what he did. He is finally free from Lee, but what did it cost him? Yim is now back in his home and he is freaking out. He realizes that he is in big trouble and he is sure that the police are going to come for him sooner rather than later. Still a part of him feels happy that he got revenge. The following day, Yim just goes to school. He is afraid that something might happen, but nothing does. He enters class and everyone is there chatting and having fun before class starts. Aim sits down and for a moment he feels relaxed. Then the teacher arrives and makes an announcement. Basically, Lee is in a coma after getting hit by a car, but they think it was just an accident. Yim feels confused, tears start to run down his face. He is happy that maybe he will be free after all. Yim just enjoys his day in class. He reads a book, does the usual schoolwork, and just chills. This is the first time in years that a school day feels calm and nice. Also, the entire classroom feels different. The other kids are also not getting bullied. Everyone seems to be happier. What a wonderful dream it is. But dreams do not last that long. Soon enough, the police arrive and Yim is arrested. It seems that CCTV cameras on the street show him pushing Lee into traffic. While it may have been an accident, he is now in serious trouble. Yim mentally breaks his life is over. He just wanted to go to school and be normal, but that is never happening now. The next few months are traumatic to say the least. He gets sentenced to two years of probation because they made him drunk that night and also because of his suicide note. Still, he is soon kicked out of his school and home. His father has no understanding and just tells him to get out. Now we see Yim on the street, a broken man with nothing in his life. Soon some of Lee's friends track him down and they are determined to get their revenge. They start to brutally beat on Yim, they don't care, they just want him gone. They beat on him and then something snaps in Yim. He takes a brick from the street and bashes one of their heads in. He is done, Yim is not taking any of it anymore. He is now a crazed animal. Yim starts to fight back, he hits all of them with a brick. He is losing control and he wants to fight all of them at once. The only problem is that there are about four of them and only one of Yim. Slowly but surely the bullies gain control over the fight and start to hit Yim with sticks and bats. He is now getting beaten up pretty badly. Yim once again tries to fight back but it's not doing anything. He is getting overwhelmed as the entire gang of bullies beats him. In that moment he starts to think that maybe this is how his life ends. Suddenly a guy shows up, he has some hot ramen with him. He looks more adult but also his clothes are old and worn out. He tells all of them to leave as this is his home. They all laugh since it's just a construction site but the man explains that he has many homes and this is one of them. The crazy bullies tell him to get lost before he gets hurt. 
The man starts to walk away but then changes his mind. He throws his hot rim in at one of the bullies and starts to fight the rest. While his moves are sloppy and strange, he slowly takes down everyone. He uses everything he can in a fight, from dirt to other objects. He beats up the entire gang without any problem, and they run away. Now it's only I'm and this mysterious guy. Yim begs him to train him, but the guy rejects him and tells him to get lost. The mysterious guy thinks that Yim is too weak to be trained since he lived a normal and calm life. Some time passes, and Yim decides to follow this mysterious guy and act just like him. Yim wants to become stronger, and he thinks this guy is his solution. He follows him, eats like him, and even dresses up like him. The guy basically lives in the street and gets into fights all the time. Finally, after a day or two, the guy tells Yim that he has to turn into the hunter and not be the weak prey. He will train him, but only if I am is able to beat up one of the bullies who harassed him. Park Jung Yim is a bully that has been harassing Yim for years now. While Lee was the worst, Park did it as well. One time, he even apologized to Yim, only to grab and slowly break his hand as a form of torture. This has been going on for years. So now in the present, Yim sees this as his chance. He's going to take down Park no matter what. Yim does a surprise attack and jumps on Park. For a moment, the mysterious man is impressed, but soon realizes that Yim does not have many fighting skills like almost none. Park kicks up without a problem and he starts to beat on Yim. He hits him in the head multiple times. He is brutal and without mercy. Park screams at Yim while he beats him to a pulp. Yim still keeps going. He tries to use every move that he learned from that guy who saved him. He tries to fight dirty as that is what a real street fight is. The problem is that Park is an athlete and almost double the size of Yim. Yim really tries, but no matter what, Park gets the upper hand in the fight. Finally, Lee decides to use his most desperate move. He points a knife at Park. Park at first is shocked. He does not believe that Yim has a real knife. Yim then tells him to try and move and Park gets scared. Park starts to run away while Yim follows him. Yim has proved that he is truly and totally crazy. He is going all out. Yim follows Park and tries to scare him while he is beating him up. Yim hits the ribs, he hits the head, he is truly trying his best. Finally, Park screams at Yim and tells him to stop. He explains that he hit him in the ribs and he has to take a break. Park seems to think that this is just a friendly sparring match. Yim, of course, does not listen and he keeps hitting him. Then it turns out that Park was just trying to trick Yim. He manages to grab his knife and puts him on the ground. Park now starts to scream as he hits Yim in the face over and over again. Yim is now totally covered in blood and Park is not stopping. Finally, Park decides to use the knife on Yim and he stabs him in the leg. Welp, it turns out that Yim was bluffing the entire time. It's not a real knife, it's just a regular math ruler. Park realizes that Yim tricked him and was basically just trying to scare him. The mysterious man is actually impressed with Yim and his skills. Still, the fight is over as Park overpowers Yim and starts to brutalize him. Finally, the man decides to get involved. He first pours a drink on Park's head. When Park gets angry, the man shows him what true power is. With one leg kick, he knocks Park down without any problem. The man tells Yim that he failed his test and he is just not that strong. Yim starts to cry and hits the ground in frustration. He is truly angry. He wants revenge, but his skills are just not there. The man does notice that Yim has that fighting spirit, so he gives him another chance. The only thing is that this one is going to be much harder to pass. The man takes Yim to a very dangerous part of town and explains the rules of the street. While the bullies at Yim's school are horrible, they are nothing compared to the real-life criminals that live in this part of the city. Yim is now clearly scared he has never experienced something like this. Then the man pushes him into one of the houses and just leaves. Yim is freaking out and soon he realizes that he is in a room with a bunch of very dangerous-looking people. We learn that the mysterious man is actually called Cho Hangul, and he left Yim with his own gang. Now these are some dangerous people. Cho Dayo has red hair and he seems very dangerous. He seems to be the leader of this current group. He wants to know if Yim has any skills and he gets frustrated when Yim informs him that he is not a fighter. Dayo is angry that Cho Hangul just left some kid with him, but he knows that he has to train him. Still Dayo decides that he is going to use Yim in everyday life. Yim now has a special room while it's more of a bathroom. He sleeps in a washroom and has no bed on the ground. Still for Yim, this is the best he can get since he is a minor and without any home. The following day, he starts doing work around the house. He cleans the toilets and waters the planets. While it is hard work, Yim likes it. At least he has a home. Still, as time goes on, he realizes how dangerous this entire neighborhood really is. Basically, almost everyone is part of a gang and the streets are filled with alcohol, drugs, and homeless people. One day, Yim is just walking when one gangster starts to attack him for no reason. Yim knows that Cho Hangul left him there to become stronger, so he decides to fight. Before he can even throw a punch, Dayab arrives and saves him. Dayab is very mean to other gangsters, but he is also an ultimate fighter. With one move, he takes down the gangster. 
He usually hangs around with someone called Kim Tak. He is mysterious and also very dangerous. The gangster that Dae-up beat up wants revenge and a mysterious stranger gives him advice on how to take down the Cho han gang. One night while the entire gang is sleeping that same gangster tries to do a gas attack on everyone. Yim is in the other room so he can smell it way before. He is able to save everyone and also chase down the gangster. Yim is now determined to beat up this gangster. Yim starts to attack the gangster and while his attack does little damage he is going crazy just throwing one punch after another. The gangster decides to run, he does not want to get in trouble with the Cho Hangle gang, and he knows he messed up. Yim keeps chasing after him, he is like a rabid dog. Then we see a flashback to the day before, Yim really wanted to train with Daya, but he got rejected. Finally, Daya told Yim to do 100,000 jumps with the jump rope. Yim wanting to prove himself did almost 50,000, which is insane. Even Daya thought that was insane since he just made up that exercise. Still, after Yim saved all of them, he made Daya promise that he will train him if he brings back the gangster who did this. Now in the present, we understand why Yim is fighting so hard, he wants to prove himself and finally get trained. He is fighting the other gangster and the guy is not that strong. Still, he is a bit stronger than Yim, so he is able to fight back. Suddenly, in a moment of desperation, the gangster pulls out a knife. Yim freezes and understands what Cho Hangul said. These are dangerous people and he has to get used to living and fighting with them if he wants to survive. The gangster goes to slash Yim, but he manages to miss several times. Finally, he is going to stab him when Yim does something insane, he grabs the blade with his own hand. The other gangster is totally shocked, he cannot believe how insane Yim is. Yim starts to push him onto a railing that is right by a ledge. Yim tries to do a move, but the gangster is too strong. The gangster thinks that Yim is trying to flip him, but Yim is actually planning something even more insane. Yim pushes and he and the gangster go flying over the ledge. Yad Yim has lost his mind totally. Yim and the gangster fall down and they hit the pavement hard. They tumble down the cliff and hit every bump on the way down. Finally, Yim gets up and sees that the gangster is bleeding and on the ground. Yim realizes in that moment that he has finally won a battle, he has beaten up someone. Then he starts to realize something else, there is a blade in his stomach. It seems while they were falling the knife hit him and stabbed him. Basically, Yim stabbed himself while falling. Yim falls down and passes out. Some time goes by and finally he wakes up in the hospital, but he is not alone. There is the entire runaway fam that is what Cho Hangul gang is called. Day of is there and the others, they all praise Yim for being insane and brave. The gangster might have escaped, but he saved all of them, so they are grateful. Soon Cho Hangul arrives and he is happy to see that Yim is safe and sound. He also asks him if he is ready to start real training. The moment Yim gets out of the hospital, things change in the house. He is now part of the runaway fam. We see them having dinner and talking, Yim cannot believe hard living on the street is. We also learn that each member of the runaway fam has some tragic backstory, and they have all lost their homes. Yim is happy to at least have these new friends and for the first time in a long while he smiles and is happy while they eat dinner. Yim starts to live in the house as an equal now. He no longer has to sleep in a washroom and can share the daily tasks with the others. Also, we learn that Cho Handel is only 19 while the rest of the crew is 18 and 17. All of them have jobs except for Yim and Cho Hangul. Yim feels bad and then one day, Dayub tells him to earn some money so that he can help them. Yim gets a job at Pizza Place and is horrible there. Everyone is super mean to him and he wants to quit and find another job. Then he meets Nayeon. She is the daughter of the pizza shop owner. Yim is used to girls ignoring him but for some reason Nayeon is different. At this point, Yim has no idea that this girl Nayeon will change his life forever. In the meantime, we see that Cho Hangul is pretty brutal when he wants to be. He beats up some other gangster and basically tells him that his life is going to end if he does not listen to him and do as he is ordered. Some time passes and Yim starts to work at the pizza place more regularly. He loves it there, he loves working with Nayeon. She is kind and brave and also hardworking. She helps Yim learn how to work and also if he makes a mistake, she helps him. Yim likes the job and actually can be happy there. Of course, as usual, then the problems start. While Nayeon is really nice, the customers are horrible. One day, Yim sees a customer scream at Nayeon and then he throws a drink at her. She only smiles and says she is sorry. Yim gets angry at this but soon learns about the situation in this place. Basically, there is a very dangerous criminal organization in this part of town. Nayeon and her father have no idea which customer is part of that organization. Her father is really sad that she has to get harassed but also he has seen what happens to other shops. Some people try to be rude or fight back against the criminals and their shops and businesses burn down to the ground. Nayeon tells Yim that it's totally okay and she's going to be fine. Yim feels so bad since she is so kind and nice. When Yim goes back home his training with Cho Hangul starts. Cho Hangul likes to tease and have fun but he's a brutal trainer. 
He does not hold back on Yim. For the first couple of days, Yim has to run all day, jump rope all day, and do all sorts of cardio exercises. It's basically hell, but Yim still keeps pushing himself. Then Cho Hangul decides to train him in fighting. Yim gets beaten up a lot during this training. Soon after, we are introduced to the evil Chun Kiwon. He has a gang of his own and he hates Cho Hangul. It seems that Cho Hangul has been attacking members of Chun's gang, and that is why he wants revenge. He sends out his hit squad to find and attack anyone from the Cho Hangul's gang. While that is happening, we see that a criminal has attacked the pizza place, and he is now harassing both Neon and her father. In that moment, Yim arrives and he cannot just stand by. He charges in raid to fight. Kim Taeyang has always been a bully. Ever since he was very young, he had a giant body and his strength was insane. Beating up people is what he loved to do and so in his high school, he was a monster. Eventually, he was kicked out of his high school and he had to be a gangster on the streets. That is when he was beaten up by Chun, who made him part of his gang. Now in the present, Kim Taeyang is faced with another enemy and his name is Yim. For Taeyang, Yim seems like a barking puppy, a small idiot who cannot touch him. Yim, on the other hand, is full on rage mode. He is not going to let anyone hurt Naeun and he is ready to go all the way. Especially since in the past few days, he has learned some things from Cho Hangul. Cho started to train Yim in boxing and throwing a simple jab. For Yim, this was insane. Cho's punching speed was out of this world. Yim finally started to realize how powerful Cho Hangul really is and also how much more he has to learn. Still, he watched carefully and trained hard. Now in the present, Yim is ready to use those skills the best he can. Taeyang starts to tell him to leave, but Yim insults him. Taeyang finally decides to just crush Yim, but it's not going to be that easy. Yim starts to dodge his hits. Yim soon realizes that Taeyang really does not know how to fight, he just has insane power. Yim starts to jab, he hits him once, and twice then he keeps hitting Taeyang over and over again. Taeyang is getting angry, but also the punches are not doing that much damage. Yim realizes while he can fight much better now, his strikes are not that strong. Taeyang is now pissed off and he wants to break Yim. He lunges at Yim, but Yim is able to dodge once again. Finally, Yim is put in a corner and now Taeyang has him. Taeyang grabs him by the neck and starts to squeeze him. Naeun cannot just stand by and she tries to help Yim. She is then kicked by Taeyang and this makes Yim truly lose control. He spits in Taeyang's eyes and then grabs a bottle. He starts to then hit Taeyang with the bottle right in his head. Soon Taeyang is covered in blood and he falls to the ground. Naeun tries to help Yim as he is really injured but he still wants to protect her. As Sho Hangul taught him in street fights there are no rules. Suddenly two other criminals enter the pizza store and Yim plans to fight even them. His strength and stamina are low but he wants to keep going. Suddenly his friend and a member of the runaway fam arrive. Kim Tak is one of the older members and he basically looks like every Final Fantasy villain ever, long hair, super handsome and edgy. Kim Tak ties up his hair and basically asks the gangsters which one of them wants to die first. Kim Tak goes on the offensive and with one powerful kick he knocks both gangsters down in seconds. They are now done for and Kim wants to know what's happening here. Yim is really injured but he is still able to explain the situation. In that moment, the pizza owner tells Kim that he had to ask for protection from Chun and his gang. Also, we learn that the gangsters were all sent because they were searching for the runaway fam. They are basically hunting them down now that Chun has given out the order. Yim is a bit confused about the entire situation so Kim Tak explains. So in the past, Mafia members ruled this part of the city. They were horrible to people and did major crimes. Then they got replaced by an even worse gang. This gang is called the Hog Wang. They are brutal and without any laws. They scare poor people and beat up store owners for money. At some point, the police decided to stop helping this neighborhood as the Hog Wang were too strong for them. Now they rule with no opposition, but the Cho Hangul and the Runaway Fam caused them some problems. The Hagwain gang tried to take over even this small street and they were stopped by the runaway fam. From then, Cho Hangul and his friends have been targets. One of the main players in Hagwain is Chun and he wants to take them all down. Neon is now crying. She realizes that she and her father are now done. They are on the bad side of this war and their shop is going to burn. Yim in that moment realizes that outside life is not much different than his school life. Poor and innocent people still get harassed and beaten up by horrible people. But now things are different. Now, Yim won't just stand by. He's going to take them all down. Yim and Kim return back to the house to meet up with the other members. In the meantime, Dayab is seen walking around and relaxing. He gets a call from Kim that explains the situation. Suddenly, Dayab spots something in the distance. An old lady holding her grandchild as she's being attacked by members of the Hog Wine. They tore apart her store and destroyed everything. Dayab decides to get involved and he beats the gangster all up. Suddenly, he is hit on the head by a baseball bat. 
It's Chun, and he has brought more of his gangsters. Yin reunites with the rest of the runaway fam back at their house, and they start to plan their next move. Suddenly, they get a text message. It's the bloody body of Dayob. Chun invites them all to come and save him. The entire runaway fam arrives, and they are ready to fight the Ha Guan. Before they entered the fight, Kim told Yim to return home as he is going to hold them back. He is still not that strong, and he can easily get into trouble. In that moment, Yim told everyone that he does not care about his life, and if he causes problems, just throw him away. Finally, all the members of Runaway Fam arrive at the scene. Chun is super happy that his plan is working, and he gets ready to send in his gang to take them down. Chun even makes fun of them. He calls Daeob super weak and also Cho Hangul a coward. He questions why their leader is not there with them. Kim is not in the mood for talking, he is only here to save his friend. The one of the group, Gaeyang, starts to make fun of Chun and his ugly beard. Chun loses his temper and he sends in his entire gang to take them down. In that moment, Yim starts to freak out, he cannot believe he is now in a big fight like this. Part of him is afraid as he is not sure his friends are ready for this fight. In that moment, he realizes that the runaway gang is notorious for a reason. Kim goes straight into the fight and he takes down like 5 guys in seconds. Hasanbin. Another member of the fam is also super strong. He starts to use boxing skills and he is lethal in combat. Yim tries to defend Gaeon, he is afraid that she might get hurt in the battle. She tells him to move out of the way and then she goes crazy. Gaeon is super fast and she can fight with anyone. Yim realizes that he is truly the weakest part of the team and he does not know where to start. He is then attacked by one gangster and he tries to fight back even using fire as a defense. In the meantime, Kim and Chun go head to head. Chun has a giant baseball bat, but Kim is strong enough. Suddenly, Yim is captured, a gangster puts a piece of glass on his neck and tells everyone to stop. Chun then tells Kim that it's over and he has to surrender, otherwise his friends are done. Kim just smiles and keeps hitting Chun in the face. In that moment, everyone realizes that Yim is the crazier one here. Kim knew what he was doing, he trusted Yim. Yim wrote a suicide note for himself, he is not afraid of anything. He grabs the glass and starts to hit the gangster. Yim is now brutally beating the gangster while the fight continues. Kim is now going one-on-one -on -one with Chun. Chun has his baseball bat, but he is also lethal in combat and moves like a maniac. Kim has to be very careful, but still he is able to keep up. In the meantime, the other members of the runaway fam start to slowly take down the entire gang in the warehouse. Finally, the battle seems to be ending, but Chun is still hanging on. Kim is looking for an opening so he can take him down, but the other gangsters grab him. Chun goes in to finish Kim off, but Yim gets involved. With a piece of wood, he hits Chun over the head. Kim is able to break free, but Chun hits Yim with the baseball bat in the stomach. Yim realizes that if he fights Chun, he dies. Chun is unlike anyone he has ever faced. The battle is now in the finish. It's Kim, Gaeong, and Haesumbin vs. Chun. Still, Chun is pretty confident that he can take all three of them down. They all go towards him, and he starts to swing his bat. The fight is brutal, and it seems like three people try and take down a giant. Chun is just pure power and he is able to fight all three of them at the same time. He is brutal and fast and Kin realizes that they are in trouble. Still, he tells Gaeon and Sunbin to stay focused. Suddenly, more gangsters arrive. Chun may be confident, but he is also a cheer. He has many more gangsters fighting for him. Kim and the others try their very best, but it's just too much. Finally, they are all knocked out. Kim is barely awake, and that is when Chun starts to torture him. Suddenly, Chun feels that something has bitten his leg. It's Yim. Yim is desperate, but he wants to help his friends, so he bites Chun. This pisses off Chun, who brutally smashes Yim. Chun now picks up the phone and he plans to call Yoon. Yoon is also part of the Hob Wine and he is a person who loves to burn stores. Chun plans to tell Yoon to burn that pizza place. Suddenly Yoon comes flying into the warehouse, he is totally beaten and covered in blood. Cho Hangul has arrived. He is all smiles and he is totally chill. He is happy that he has finally found Chun. He then issues a final warning for all the gangsters, he will not stop until they stop moving. Cho Hangul makes fun of Chun for being so desperate and weak. Still, it's obvious that Cho is angry that his entire family got brutally beaten. For that reason, he won't hold back this time. One of the gangsters runs at Cho Hangul, and it does not go well. This gangster gets his arm broken in seconds. Chun then sends his entire gang after Cho Hangul. They all charge at the same time, but that is no problem for Cho Hangul. He moves so fast and so gracefully. It's almost like he is dancing, but he is brutal. Yim starts to realize that the entire time that Cho Hangul has been training with him, he has been pulling back. Also, the first time he saved him from those bullies, he was even using 1% of his power. Now Cho Hangul is just going crazy and taking down gangsters one by one. Chun starts to get worried and he remembers a conversation he had with the true leader of Hog Wan. Chun wanted to get revenge on Cho Hangul for months and he begged his leader to let him. 
His leader rejected this plan and warned him about Cho Handel. He told him to stay away from Cho as he is a monster. Chun never understood that and now he wants to prove to his boss that he can take down Cho Hangul. Chun attacks and Cho Hangul fight him at the same time as taking down the other gangsters. It's a brutal and fast fight and Chun is barely able to keep up. Suddenly it's only him versus Cho Hangul. Chun in a desperate move tries to do something, he grabs Kim and plans to break his shoulder. Kim knows that Cho Hangul will never stop so he tells Chun that this is useless. Chun breaks Kim's shoulder but that just makes Cho Hangul more angry and strong. Cho Hangul now charges at Chun and starts to just brutalize him with no mercy. Chun tries to defend himself but soon he loses his baseball bat and his hand is broken. In that moment he realizes why his boss told him to stay away from Cho Hangul. Also he remembers that his boss told him one final warning about Cho Hangul. Whoever messes with him does not end up just being punished. They are never the same again. We now see Chun being dragged, he is powerless and afraid. Cho Hangul takes him to a barrel filled with fire and he plans to burn him without any mercy. Chun went from being a badass gangster to a scarred child. Chun screams as his head goes into the fire, he now realizes that his boss was right and he did not warn him without any reason. Well, it's like they say, play stupid games, get stupid rewards. Cho Hangul puts Chun right next to the fire. His face slowly starts to burn as he begs for mercy. This is the first time that Yim saw how dangerous Cho Hangul really is. Up until now, he was always nice and quirky, but now Yim realizes that he is very dangerous. Cho Hangul lets go of Chun right before he dies. Chun falls to the ground and starts to scream from the pain. Hangul then beats him up some more. After that, Cho Hangul goes to pick up his friends. He is gentle and kind with them. He jokes with Yim that life on the street is not that easy. The runaway fam goes to the hospital and they stay there for a few days. After they recover, they were afraid of the hospital bills, but it seems that the pizza owner covered all the bills. After that, things calmed down a bit. Their neighborhood was now peaceful. The Hagwine group did not come to bother them. Everyone knew that Cho Hangul deleted Chun, so now they were all afraid. Yim returned to work in the pizza place, and it was good, life was peaceful. Still, that was never going to last. The Hogwine group found Chun, and this was the start of a very long war between them and the runaway fam. This is not something that they are just going to forget. Cho Hangul gathered all the members of the runaway fam, and they talked about the situation. He told them that the Hagwine was going to return at some point, and they have to decide if they are going to stay and fight or run away. Everyone decided to stay. That same night, Yim went to talk with Hangul. Hangul praised Yim for learning so fast, but Yim was not satisfied. He wanted to learn faster and become as strong as the other members of the fam, he did not want to slow them down. Hangul then remembered that there is one method they could use for him to train even more. Now in the present, we see Yim working in the pizza store, he loves how calm every day is. While taking out the trash, he notices something is wrong with Nayeon. She looks afraid and worried as she holds a teddy bear. Yim tries to ask her about it, but she just deflects and pretends all is good. She then invites Yim to spend a day with her after school. Yim gets super hyped. This is his first time being alone with a girl he likes. Some of the fam helps Yim get all dressed up, even puts earrings in, and he feels super embarrassed. He goes to meet with Nayeon at her school, but she is very late for their meeting. Yim feels very odd being around the school after all this time. Then he notices that Nayeon is getting harassed by some creepy dudes. It seems that she just like Yim is getting bullied at school. This creepy dude gave her a teddy bear with a camera so that he could record her naked. Suddenly, Yim joins in the argument and he confronts the horrible bully. Sung Donha is the creeper that has been harassing Nayeon for quite some time. He also thinks that Yim is a loser who is super weak. While Yim still has a lot of training to do, he makes up for it by being totally insane. Right away, Yim starts to throw punches, but he is not holding back. He's going to defend Nayo no matter what. The problem is that Sung also has some pretty good boxing skills, so he starts to beat up Yim. Suddenly the fight is stopped, and there are teachers and other students around the school. Sung Dana leaves with his boys but promises to get his revenge on Yim and Nayeon. Nayeon and Yim go to have some drinks and they talk. Nayeon is obviously very upset and she is stressed out. Yim tells her to talk about it. He explains that he knows what she's going through. He was also bullied in school and it got so bad that his life fell apart. At that time, he did not talk with anybody, but now he realizes that this was a giant mistake. Yim offers Nayuna help, he will listen and help her. She starts to cry and finally opens up. She explains that at first, Sung was nice, he was a chill guy. Then things started to change, he would grab Nayun and then act weird. At first, he pretended like it was just an honest mistake, but soon it became obvious that he was just harassing her, and she became his toy. This went on and on for a long time. Nayeon did not want to bother her father, she did not know where to turn. They were having trouble with those gang members, so it was all too much and she had to suffer alone. 
She wanted someone to help, but there was nobody to turn to. Yim promises to help her out, and when they end their drinks, he gets super pissed. Yim is not going to let Sung get away with this. We then see Sung harassing another girl in a karaoke bar. He has also sent one of his bullies to attack Yim. Later, Sung with his friends goes to just chill and laugh at some girl. In that moment, they are suddenly hit with a fire extinguisher. It is Yim, and he is pissed off. Turns out that the guy who was following Yim was attacked by Hangul. Yim is not going to let Sung have any fun, he is bringing the fight to him. Yim turns on the fire extinguisher and starts to spray it all around. While Sung might be stronger, Yim is far more crazy. Nothing is going to stop him from getting his revenge. Before Yim went in to fight with Sung, Hangul had some advice for him. Hangul told him that this is the faster method of learning. While training is good, getting into real fights is much, much better. Yim was confused by this, but he told Hangul that he has to win this one. Hangul realized that this truly means something to Yim, so he gave him some advice. Sung is a former boxer, so it will not be easy. Still, there is always a way. In the present, Yim starts a brutal fight with Sung. He tries to use the fire extinguisher, but it's no use. Sung is just too fast and his boxing is insane. He is able to hit Yim when he least expects it. Yim then gets hit a few times and finally he puts his hands up. He reads to the box as well, so he goes for it. The problem is, this is not a fair fight. Sung is beyond his levels of strength, and in terms of boxing, Yim just cannot compare. Yim tries to attack a few times, but each time he gets hit a lot. Finally, he realizes that it's no use, he has to give up using boxing. He has to use pure street fighting and tricks. Sung goes straight for his head to finish off the fight. In that moment, Yim opens the doors and Sung hits it straight on. Sung's hand is now hurting badly, but he is still in the fight. Yim tries to grab Sung, but it's no use. Sung hits him with a jab straight in the face. No matter how fast Yim moves, Sung is able to hit him. Still, Sung soon realizes that Yim has a plan. Yim is trying to bait Sung into using his hurt hand. Ninki is trying to grab Sung, and finally it happens. Sung hurts his hand badly, and Yim grabs him. In a flashback, we see that Hangul told Yim to use something called a clinch. In boxing, this is what happens when fighters grab onto each other and hold tight. For a boxer, it's going to be a problem to hit when he is in a clinch. This is what Yim is doing right now. Hangul also warned Yim about a clear fact, Yim may lose this fight. Sung is a boxer and much more experienced. While Yim has the will to fight, his body is still evolving and he is still learning. But Hangul gave Yim some motivation. A fight is not won just by pure power and fighting skills, there are other elements to it as well. Then it's time for Yim to attack and what better weapon than his knees. Yim starts to use knee kicks on Sung and he is not holding back. He hits him over and over again until Sung's ribs are broken. Still Sung is able to get out of this clinch but Yim has one final move. He grabs Sung by the hair and pulls out the ultimate knee kick to the head. Sung goes flying as his head is blasted like he got hit by a shotgun. Yim is now beating the daylights out of Sung. Sung starts to remember his life. When he learned boxing, nobody could stop him. With his fighting skills, he got whatever he wanted, but now something has changed. This loser is going to beat him up. Sung cannot accept that this is really happening and he cannot accept that he is going to lose to someone like Yim. Suddenly, a giant arrives and grabs Yim. This is another bully and Sung's friend. Sung now grabs the fire extinguisher and he basically plans to murder Yim. Sung is about to get his revenge when a sudden kick sends him flying into the wall. Hangul has arrived and he is here to have some fun. He grabs Sung by the balls and starts to torture all of them. The girl who was getting harassed by Sung earlier tries to escape. She then sees Yim and Hangul torturing Sung and his boys. Sung and his other bullies are totally naked and beaten up. Hangul is taking their pictures and torturing them. The girl thanks Yim for the help and in that moment Yim realizes that Naevan was not the only victim. Yim tells Sung that if he goes near any of the girls he is dead. Some time passes, Hangul and Yim go to have lunch with Naeun. She explains that ever since that event, Sung has been acting weird. He does not bother her or anyone else, and he is always scared. Naeun is sad that Yim got hurt in the fight, but Yim is just happy that she's okay. Then we learn that this was not the end of it. Nain told Yim and Hangul that there are other horrible guys in her school. Also, Yim found horrible photos on Sung's phone and group chats where they would harass girls. In that moment, Hangul came up with a new idea. We see that girl getting harassed by some bullies from the school, they were friends with Sung and they are also horrible people. The girl does not want to tell them anything about Hangul and Yim. Suddenly, Hangul arrives and stops the bullies. He pretends to be weak and screams for help. He is basically making fun of the bullies but also getting them ready for Yim. Suddenly, Yim arrives and he just starts to brutally beat them up. We learn that this is the new training method that Hangul has in mind. Now all these horrible bullies that have been harassing girls are basically test dummies for Yim. 
He's going to train while beating them up. Hanvil smiles like a proud dad while Yim goes crazy and starts to brutalize the bullies. Hanvil is just hanging back, he is just chilling. One of the bullies tries to attack him, but he grabs him and holds him so tight the bully cries out in pain. Hanvil just tells him to wash and also attack Yim. The bully is confused, but he does not realize that this is training for Yim. Yim is now fighting the bully and he is going all out. He has to learn how to fight. Hangul thinks about his development over time. While Yim is still pretty weak, he is growing power like crazy. In just mere weeks, he has evolved his footwork and his punching. He is also crazy, so that makes his fighting even better. Still, there are a lot of problems and he has still much to learn. Yim fights and he uses all his skills so far, he is fast and his attacks land pretty good. The only problem is that there is not enough power behind them. His enemies usually recover pretty fast and go on the offensive. Yim gets hit badly a couple of times. So bad that the girl asks Hangul if he is going to help. He just laughs and tells her that Yim has got this. Then he sends the other bully in to fight Yim. Yim is now worried. Fighting two on one is way harder. Hangul tells him that he has to learn the hard way and this is it. Yim tries to fight both of them but soon realizes that he has no time for breaks while fighting two people at once. Still he pushes through the pain and just goes crazy. He gets hit a couple of times and is pretty brutal. Those two bullies are going hard on him. Finally, Yim realizes that he cannot fight fair. He grabs a bottle on the ground and smashes it into one of the bullies. He then jumps on the guy and knocks him out. The other bully realizes that Yim is out of his mind and he is scared. Still, Yim is so tired that he just falls to the ground. The bully tries to use this, but he gets scared by Hangul. Hangul carries Yim back home where he recovers. Hangul then explains that he has to learn the hard way. None of these gangsters and criminals ever fight fair, they always fight in teams and they cheat. Hangul tells Yim that at this point he cannot get revenge, he can just lose. But still there is hope for him, and they have to continue training. Soon after that, Hangul and Yim go out once more. This time we see a couple of bullies harassing a student in the park, they'd want his money, and they are hitting him pretty badly. Hangul tells Yim that he is going to lose if he fights fair, he has to fight dirty. We see a flashback of a training session with Hangul and Yim. Hangul pulls out a brutal punch and it totally breaks a bag of rice. This type of punch is called a hook and basically it's lethal. If you land a hook hit on someone's chin they are done, knocked out with no problem. Yim got really excited about that, finally something he can use in any fight. Hangul then explained that it does not work like that. It's very hard to land a hook on the chin, most people will defend against it and you might miss. Hangul then explains that while fighting a group there is a way to pull it off even for someone as weak as Yim. We then return to that park, Yim is walking towards a group. There is four of them, which is a lot. They are all harassing this kid on the ground. Now Yim pulls out the move Hangul taught him, but also he does it in the right way. The street fights are rarely fair, so it's important to be the best in them that means hitting first. Yim just walks towards the gang and he uses his hook on a guy, he crashes right into his chin and the guy goes down like a cut down tree. Now he has the rest of the group to fight with. Hangul told him to try and take down as many as possible before they can react. Yim goes for another one, but this time it does not land, he hits him but the guy defends himself. Now Yim is in trouble, they are all attacking him at the same time. They have no idea who he is or why he is attacking them, but they are going to take him down. Now Yim pulls out another elite move that Hangul taught him, this move is something that very few people can do. The move is called running as fast as possible before you die. Basically Hangul told Yim he gets cornered to just run like hell. Yim does just that he starts running and all the bullies run after him. Now it's time to move on to part 2, he has to do hit and runs. This basically means that all the people chasing after him will go in separate directions. He has to isolate them and then go one on one with them with surprise hits. He does just that and knocks one guy out with no problem. Yim continues to run and soon he gets caught by the group leader. Now this guy is something else, he is far stronger. Yim tries to use a hook but he blocks it. Then the leader goes on the offensive, he hits Yim so many times that Yim starts to bleed all over the place. Yim now falls to the ground and the leader finishes him off. He starts to walk away from Yim who is now on the ground. Now comes the final lesson that Hangul told Yim, if he loses the one-on-one -on -one fight it's time to use everything. His biggest advantage in a street fight is being insane and having a weapon. Yim then grabs a rock and just goes crazy on the leader, he smashes his head in. Soon the last guy arrives and he cannot believe how insane Yim is. He then asks Yim why he is attacking them. In that moment, Yim remembers his high school bully Lee. They once told Yim that the reason he is attacking him is just because it's fun. Now in the present with his insane face, Yim tells the bully the same thing. He is attacking them just because. Yim is crazy and while holding that rock he goes after the bully. In his head the bully realizes that this guy is not normal and if he stays and fights he is getting deleted. 
The bully starts to run, but like a horror character, Yim runs after him. Yim is holding a rock in one hand and cursing at the bully while he runs after him. Imagine seeing this while walking in town, just a high schooler with a rock chasing another high school student. Yim wants to capture the bully and take him down as well, but he's getting tired. His stamina is running out. He has been fighting for a while now, and he is also injured. Finally, he gives up, and the scared bully runs away. Suddenly, the bully falls to the ground as someone tripped him. It's Hangul. He is looking for Yim. The bully is totally losing his mind, so he hits Hangul, since he is in rage mode. That does not go over well, with one punch, Hangul knocks the bully out cold. Hangul finally finds Yim and teases him for losing one of the bullies. Still, Hangul is proud of Yim and tells him that maybe he is not so weak after all. Still, Yim has a long way to go, he is nowhere near the level of anyone in the runaway fam. Yim does not mind that he wants to keep growing and evolving his fighting style. They go back home and decide to pick up his training some other time. Basically, a few days go by and Liam and Hangul hunt down bullies wherever they are and Yim trains on them. He beats them up, and that is how he gets better. This news hits Wang Sagan, he is a world-class bully in his school. He is all muscle, and everyone's afraid of him. Wang has now found out that Sung and many others have gotten beaten up. He is talking with the second-in-command, Kim Donjin. They are commenting that someone outside of the school is attacking their friends. Basically, whenever someone is attacked, a kid in a gray shirt arrives and beats up the bullies. Wam already has a plan to bait this person and fight them. Suddenly, we see two students from the third year drinking some water, but they are a bit too loud. Wang starts to get angry right away, and since he is a bully, he has to beat them up. Suddenly, Han Jizu arrives, and now this is the definition of a giant. Han is huge, and he is also an athlete in the school. He tells Wang to stop attacking people. Wang does not listen to him and does a leg kick right away. Han Jizu is able to defend himself at first, but since he is an athlete, he fights fair. Wang does not fight fair at all. He spits in Han's eyes and then ties his neck up with a pipe. Han gets beaten up badly, and Wang loves every minute of it. Then Wang plans to take down those mysterious fighters that have been attacking his friends. The following day, we see that Yim is waiting for Mayan. They are going for a walk together, and Yim is super nervous and happy. He is all red in his face, but he loves spending time with her. They start talking when suddenly, Yim notices that someone is getting beaten up. At first, he tries to ignore it. He is loving his time with this girl, and Hangul is nowhere to be found. He should just ignore it. Nobody helped him when he was getting beaten up. Then Yim feels shame. Yes, nobody helped him, and he wants to be different than all those who never helped him. For that reason, he decides to get involved. He tells Mayim to wait for a moment while he goes to the bathroom. Yim goes into the street, and he beats up the two attackers without any problem. He realizes that they were very weak, and something feels strange. A mysterious figure thanks him for saving him, but also challenges him to a fight. Yim tries to leave, but this person grabs him. It is then revealed that this was all a trap. The mysterious person is Kwong, and he wanted to bait Yim. Yim is now in serious trouble because Kwong is on a whole other level and there is nobody to save Yim at this moment. Yim realizes that Huang set a trap just for him. Huang is all smiles as he gets ready for their fight. He has been hunting Yim for a while. Yim should have just stayed with Mayan, but now he is in real trouble. Still, he charges at Huang, hoping to take him down fast. This does not work out that way. Huang is on a whole different level. Whatever Yim tries, Huang can counter. Also, Yim cannot even connect one hit. Huang has insane reach and is always able to hit Yim first. Yim tries several times, but nothing works, and he feels his body getting tired and injured. Wang tells him that he does not really care about those bullies that Yim took down, he just wants to break him himself. Yim tries to fight dirty, he even uses literal dirt to throw it in Huang's eye. Then Yim tries to do a knee kick to the body, but Wang is able to stop it with no problem. Wang plays dirty as well as he hits Yim right in the balls. Yim falls to the ground and Wang starts to stomp on his face, Wang then takes a picture of him and promises that everyone from his high school is going to be hunting him down. Naeem is worried about Yim and goes looking for him. Soon she finds him totally bloody in the street. Later they talk and he explains why he fights. He tells Naeem that his life ended because of bullies like this and he has to fight so that he survives. Naeem tells him to get his revenge but she also tells him to plan for his life after that. She wants him to be the boss of the pizza place. Yim is really grateful to have a friend like her. Soon Yim returns home and Hangul teases him for getting beat up. Yim tells the runaway fam that now that the entire high school is going to be hunting him down. Some of the members of the fam want to fight everyone and defend Yim, but Hangul has different plans. Hangul tells Yim that this is his ultimate test, he is going to take down that high school filled with bullies. Jongrang High School is filled with insane bullies and it's a notorious place. Now Hangul wants Yim to take it over and dominate all the bullies there. 
For Yim, this is an insane challenge, he is kind of afraid of it. He just got beat up by Huang, so he is not really confident. Hangul then questions if he even wants to get his revenge. Yim proclaims that he will do anything that he has to do. Still, he has no idea how a person can take over a high school. Does he just beat up everyone there? Hangul then explains the rules. Yim does not have to fight everyone, he just needs to defeat the strongest people in the school, the leaders. When he does that, the other bullies will fear him and run away, he will be the leader. Still, there is some training to be had, and Gaeyang is going to be in charge of this one. She is going to teach Yim a special move that he can use on Wang. Wang gave him a lot of problems in their last fight cause he has such long hands and legs, it was very hard to attack him. Gaeyang has a solution for that. Before that can happen, Yim first has to find out who is the strongest and baitest person in Ju Rang High School. He goes to see those bullies that he beat up a few nights ago. They are all trash-talking him since Huang beat them up, but they are surprised when Yim jumps out of the bushes. With a mean left hook, he takes down one of them and then starts to beat up and torture the other bully. Yim then demands to know who is the most dangerous person in this high school. The bully finally reveals the name, Ha Iltak is the strongest in Zhang Rang High School. He very rarely comes to school, but he is feared by everyone. Then after him, Huang and his friends are the strongest. Yim demands that the bully gives him the phone number of Huang so that he can challenge him. We see that Gaeyang and Hangul train Yim in a very special fighting style. When someone is taller and has longer limbs, it's important to stop them before they start hitting you. Hangul then explained to Yim that he has to close in the distance and take Huang to the ground. Gaeyang demonstrated that with her signature wrestling skills. Now it's up to Yim to do the same. Wang suddenly gets a text message and it's Yim calling him out and inviting him to a one-on-one -on -one fight. Wang arrives and Yim jumps out of the bushes and hits him. Wang blocks the hit, but it was never supposed to land anyway. This was Yim's plan all along to throw the first punch and close that distance. Now Yim lowers himself down and grabs Wang by his waist. He takes him to the ground and prepares to just hit him with his phone. Kim Dongjin is another bully who hangs out with Wang a lot. He is told by the other gangsters that Wang has gone out to fight Yim. Kim Donjin does not care about Huang, but he also wants to beat up Yim. He gets on his bike and drives to the location of the fight. In the meantime, Yim is now on top of Huang and he is hitting him hard, he has his phone in his hand so the hits are extra painful. Still, Huang is able to get out of this position. Huang puts his finger inside of Yim's mouth and almost tears his entire lip. Yim is now in a bad position, he has lost his advantage and now Huang has started to beat him up again. Huang is way too fast, he is able to move quickly and dodge any strike. He also delivers hits that are just way too powerful. Wang starts to just have fun with Yim. He is beating him without any mercy. Hangul is also there if he wants to see what Yim can do in this situation. In the meantime, Yim is freaking out. He realizes that Huang is way too much and he cannot take him head on. He tries to fight dirty and do a knee kick, but Wang is able to grab it without any problem. Then Yim does an insane move. He basically copies Huang and does the same thing with his finger in the mouth. Huang is now bleeding from his mouth and he is really angry. Yim jumps on him and starts to beat him up. Hangul is actually impressed. It seems that Yim likes to copy moves from his enemies and he is evolving in the fight. Huang starts to beg Yim for mercy, but of course it's just a trap. He grabs Yim by the lei and we see that Kim Donjin is driving his bike directly at Yim. Yim freezes and realizes that he might actually die in this moment. In the last second, Hangul arrives and saves Yim. Hangul does not want to get involved in the fight, he just pushes Kim Donjin off his bike and he puts him in a 2s 1 fight with Yim. Yim is freaking out as he is now fighting not one powerful enemy but two at the same time. Still there is no time to waste and he puts everything he has into a mean hook that hits Kim Donjin right in the chin. For a moment there Yim is happy with his punch but soon he realizes something horrible. The punch did nothing to Kim Donjin. Kim just hits Yim with full force and it hurts a lot. Yim is now fighting off a weaker and more injured Huang and a full powered up Kim Dongjin. Kim also seems to not take any damage no matter what. Yim tries to hit him several more times but each punch is too weak. Kim starts to make fun of Huang for getting badly beaten, but now Huang also wants revenge. In the meantime, Hangul is watching from a distance. He wants to see how Lim does in this fight. While Yim has some skills, he is brutal and can copy his enemy's attacks. He also still has a lot to learn. He has to realize that street fights like this are rarely fair. Yim tries to target the more tired and injured Huang, but it does not work. Kim Donjin is just too fast and also hitting him is like hitting a wall. Kim makes fun of Yim for having weak punches while Yim pulls everything he has into those punches. Now Huang and Kim start to team up and just brutalize Yim. Yim is now bleeding and this fight is not going his way. These two are too much. Still, Yim does not want to give up so it's time to follow the rules. It's time for the hit and run. Yim starts to run while Kim and Huang chase after him. 
Huang manages to grab Yim, but this was a trap. Yim hits him with a powerful knockout punch and sends him flying. Now it's time to face off against Kim, and this does not go over so well. While he hits Kim once, Kim is able to hit him back. Huang then arrives and grabs Yim from the back. Kim starts to get Yim while Huang holds him. It's not a fair fight and Yim is losing it badly. In this situation, Yim is just not in the same league with these guys. Hangul is worried about him but wants to see what he does next, so he does not get involved just yet. Finally, Yim in a moment of desperation realizes that this fight is over, but he has to push the limit. He goes crazy and knocks Huang with a hit. Then he goes after Kim and pushes him into the river below. Both of them start to fight in the water. Yim now plans to see who dies first in this new fight area while they both struggle to breathe. Even Hangul is surprised by this insane move, but Yim is going all the way. Yim and Kim are now at the bottom of the river and Yim is not letting go. He has Kim by the throat and he is squeezing him. Huang, on the other hand, is still recovering from the hit he took from Yim. Suddenly, Yim comes out of the water and with one hit, he knocks out Huang. It seems that Kim gave up in the water and begged for mercy. Yim and Hangul walk away victorious. Yim also realizes that while he was fighting these two guys, Hangul beat up the entire gang that came to help them. Hangul is proud of Yim and they go have some food together. Soon after that, the leader of the high school bullies gets informed. Iltak is now coming down. Iltak arrives and he sees Kim and Huang by the river and they are done. Kim tells Huang that he had to lose as Yim had crazy eyes and he was going to murder him in that water. Iltak does not have any mercy for any of them and he starts to hit them as punishment. He is now determined to take down Yim himself. The following day, Yim is just going shopping when two guys on a bike charge at him. One of them has a metal bat and he plans to hit Yim on the head. Dayub arrives in the last second and defends Yim. Soon after that, Hangul shows up and takes down the bikers in one move. Hangul then explains to Yim that this is what happens when a street fight is not finished. Yes, he defeated two pretty strong guys, but he did not finish the leader. Now the leader Iltak is sending his goons to finish the job. Iltak calls the gangsters, but Yim picks up the phone. Yim wants to fight him one-on-one -on -one and Iltak agrees to that. Of course, since Iltak is a scumbag, he brings his entire gang with him. Yim is also smart and he brings the entire runaway fan with him. Hangul takes down one of the gangsters with no issue and he tells Iltak to stop being a coward and fight Lime one-on-one -on -one in a fair fight. Iltak then comes towards Yim and recognizes him. Yim also recognizes Iltak. Iltak used to hang out with Lee, the main bully who ruined Yim's life, and he would also harass Yim. Yim tells Hangul that no matter what he is winning this fight, Iltak was always notorious all over the place and of course he was friends with Lee and his other bullies, that is how he started to also harass Yim. Yim was their personal ashtray and body bag. They would hit and brutalize him at all times without any mercy. Iltak especially wanted to have fun with Yim, so one day he just started to slap him. He did this over and over again until Yim was in tears. Iltak loved to see others in pain and Yim was the perfect target. Now the present Iltak and Yim stand in front of each other. Iltak makes fun of Yim once more and promises to make him afraid again. Yim does not hold back and he charges at Iltak. Iltak is just too skilled and he is able to dodge all of Yim's attacks. He also starts to brutally beat up Yim. Yim in that moment realizes that he is still afraid. All those years of trauma still make him afraid in these moments. Yim does not want to surrender to that fear so he keeps going forwards. He hits Iltak once and twice, but still does not do much damage. Finally, Yim tries to go all out. He's like a raging dog attacking without any control. The runaway fam wants to stop the fight but Dayab tells them to calm down. He has faith in Yim for a very specific reason. Despite all the times they have spent together, Dayab has seen how hard Yim trains every day. There is something in his eye, he pushes himself like nobody else. No matter how difficult it got, Yim would always train until his body could not move anymore. That kind of determination does not come out of nowhere. That is why Dayab is certain that Yim can handle this fight no matter what. We see Iltak brutally beat Yim, but suddenly the tables turn. Yim goes on the offensive and he jumps on Iltak who starts to hit him in the face. He is not holding back anymore. Iltak then grabs Yim and decides to put him in an impossible position. Iltak makes fun of him and tells him to be scared like in the past. This is something that triggers Yim even more, so he starts to headbutt Iltak over and over again. He hits his head on his head way too many times. There is blood everywhere, but Iltak still keeps going. He cannot believe how strong Yim is, and for the first time he is afraid. Also, the other bullies think that Iltak might actually lose this fight. For that reason, Iltak grabs Yim's hand and starts to break it. Still, Yim has that crazy look in his eyes and he is not about to back down, no matter what he is going to fight on. 
Hiltak tries to break Yim hand. He is really trying as he realizes that the crowd is turning on him. They all think he's going to lose the fight. Hangul in the meantime remembers a training session he had with Yim. It was just a regular training session, but then something odd happened. Hangul promised that he was only going to use one hand. Then Yim pulled out a tricky move. He stepped on Hangul's foot and tried to hit him. Hangul had to use both hands and that surprised him. It surprised him that someone like Yim had those skills. It seems that Iman have a natural fighter talent. He just did not know about it. In the present, it seems like Yim's hand is about to snap, but suddenly he gets up and switches positions with Iltak. He starts to beat the shit out of Iltak, but then his gang members get involved. They want to defend their boss. The runaway fam takes some of them down, but soon Iltak gets involved in the fight. He does not want them to embarrass him, he wants to deal with Yim alone. Iltak comments that Yim has evolved a lot, but he is still a coward. Iltak then throws a powerful kick right into Yim's head. Still, Yim is able to attack and he starts to hit Iltak. Every hit is brutal, and they are basically both going all out. At one point, they trade blows in the same time, hitting each other in the face. The gangsters are all now turning on Iltak. They think he cannot handle this himself. Yim is now going in to finish the fight. He is moving like a possessed man, and he is brutal. Iltak is now scared. He realizes that the fight is not going to end how he wants it. Hangul, in the meantime, starts to think more about Yim and his fighting evolution. It seems that while Yim was bullied his entire life, he never got the chance to unlock his true powers. Hangul realizes that Yim has insane potential and basically if he continues to evolve and fight, he is going to turn into a master really fast. Yim is using moves from Hangul, from the bullies he fought and from everyone. He is basically copying their moves and then upgrading them for himself. The fight at that moment ends, Yim delivers the finishing blow and Iltak is now on the ground. Hangul tells Yim to be scared so that the other gangsters run away in fear. Yim is able to muster up some courage and he sends all the bullies and gangsters running with his threats. After that, everything changes overnight. The bullies were scared from that day. Huang, Kim, and Iltak were all sent to detention centers, but Iltak escaped and has not been seen in a while. With the evidence that Yim gathered, the school started an investigation into the harassment of the girls in the school. Many of the bullies were arrested and kicked out of the school. Mayim could return to a normal life and she thanked Yim for everything he did. Yin was so happy that he could do something useful, he saw Nayan with her father finally being at peace. When he returned to the runaway fam, they made a giant celebration for his first win, and they all congratulated him for his achievement. Yim felt really proud and lucky to have such good friends. Still something was bothering him, but he could not express it. Hangul noticed that Yim was not that happy. That night, Yim cannot sleep and goes outside to think. Hangul joins him and they talk. Hangul wants to know why Yim isn't super happy. He questions if he still wants to get revenge. Yim then finally explains it all. He wants revenge and he never felt better than when he knocked out Iltak, but something feels wrong. Yim feels robbed of a normal life. Yes, he can get his revenge, but he won't have a normal school life and his family will never accept him. He will always be a runaway without anyone. In that moment, Hangul tells him to not worry. He's going to make his life very interesting and happy. Dayub hears this conversation, so the following day he organizes a fun day for the entire runaway fam. They go to a karaoke bar and then bowling. They grab some food and have a lot of fun and laughs. Yim truly loves spending time with his friends and life is good. When the day is over, Yim plans to go back home. Suddenly he hears a familiar voice and he turns. Yim is shocked to see his father right in front of him. Yim remembers how his life was as a child. His father was always mean and cruel to him. His brother and sister would show off their schoolwork and the father was proud of them. Whenever Yim did anything, he was beaten and punished. Every time he got a bad grade, his father hit him so hard that his skin bleed. Some time passed and Yim really focused up on his studies. He wanted to prove himself to his father. Then one day he came back with some great grades. His father looked at the grades and he said nothing. He was ashamed once again and told Yim that he will never be like his brother or sister. Time went on and Yim was not beaten anymore, but also his father did not ask him any questions. He did not bother him, he was not interested in his schoolwork, nothing. It was like Yim was not even part of the family. Somehow not getting hit any more hurt more than when he was getting hit by his father. At least then his father cared a bit about him. Now in the present, Yim is hit once more. His father slaps him and starts to scream at him. The father is embarrassed as Yim left. Yim was supposed to return home, but now too much time has passed. The family is embarrassed and so the father has come to tell Yim to go home. He is going to be punished when he gets home, but he has to return. Yim starts to cry and he finally lets out all of his anger and sadness. He screams at his father for all the years of neglect and hate. He did not care about him anyway, but now that he is embarrassed, Yim has to return. This is not something that Yim is just going to take. He is not going to return home. 
His father is shocked by the way Im speaks to him and he goes to hit him again. In the last second, Hangul shows up and stops the hit. He tells the father to relax and that there is no need for violence. The father starts to insult Hangul and Yim, he calls them both street thugs. Hangul once again nicely asks the father to calm down before things turn for the worst. Hangul will not allow anyone to hurt Yim anymore. One last time, the father orders Yim to go back home or else it's over forever. Yim tells him that he does not need a family like that. Finally, Yim is free from his past and Hangul hugs him. Hangul also tells him that a real family can be created. In that moment, Yim feels true happiness. He has a new family and he is now part of the runaway fam. Months go by and Yim trains even harder. He gets better every day. Also, he loves his new life with the runaway fam and his job at the pizza place. Finally, after some time, Hangul asks him if he is ready to continue his revenge. In the same time, after many months, Lee, the guy who bullied Yim and also got hit by that truck, finally wakes up. The first words he speaks are Yim. Yim and Hangul continue to train and develop their skills. Every moment Yim gets better. His fighting skills are improving all the time. While that is happening, Lee starts to get used to his new life. He has a nightmare where Yim pushes him into traffic over and over again. Lee wakes up and we now see his condition. His body is frail. He is all covered in scars and his legs are really in bad shape. He can barely walk and he looks really skinny. Still, the coma might have changed his appearance, but it did not change Lee. The moment he woke up, he wanted to murder Yim. That is his goal. The problem is that he is no longer that same old badass Lee. His friends have forgotten him and he is now really weak. He can barely fight anyone. One day, Lee goes to talk with two of his friends. They were all bullies together. Now times are changed and those friends of his do not really want to join up with Lee anymore. He is weak and pathetic to them. Lee tries to learn more about the situation and he wants to hunt down Yim. He is shocked by what he finds out. He finds out that Yim basically beat up every badass in this area he even took down Iltak. Lee cannot believe any of this that weak person Yim. There is no way he is that badass now. His former friends also push around Lee since he is now super weak. He decides to find Yim himself and get his revenge. We then see Hangul, Yim and Naeon all hanging out and having fun. Soon Yim is able to stop them, he sees Yim for the first time since the accident and he plans his revenge. Hangul and Yim spot an old man getting attacked by some thugs. Yim and Hangul use their fighting skills and take down those thugs without a problem. In that moment, Lee realizes that those stories were true and Yim has changed. Hangul also notices that something weird is happening in the neighborhood. He thinks that maybe the Hagwang is coming back for revenge. Lee tries to leave, but he then gets attacked by some bullies who see him as weak. They start to brutally beat him down and Lee is now in tears. This is the first time he has felt this type of pain in a long time. Then he is saved by none other than Yim. Yim punches out the two bullies and saves Lee. Lee is frozen in fear. He cannot believe what just happened. We see a bit of Lee in his past. He actually got bullied when he was in middle school. Lee was a bit overweight, so the bullies started to harass him. Lee was really sad and he wanted to fight back, so he started to hit anyone who stood in his way. From that moment on, he decided to never feel like that again and instead others will feel his pain. Now in the present, he is on the ground. His body is broken and weak. His victim, the kid he bullied for years, is now helping him. Lee's mind is broken and he does not want Yim to notice who he is. Yim is really worried as he thinks this is just a man in danger. Lee starts to walk away slowly. His legs cannot move that fast. Suddenly, it starts to rain. Yim once again tries to help Lee. He brings him an umbrella. In that moment, Lee snaps and tells Yim to leave him alone. He does not show his face and he leaves. Yim is frozen. He recognizes that voice, the voice of the person who bullied him for years. Still, Yim cannot believe that this is Lee, so he lets the man go. This is a decision Yim will regret for many years. Yim joins Hangul and his other friends and he leaves. When Yim arrives back at the house, he is officially made a member of the Hangul family. He gets a sweet new jacket and he is happy with his new life. Things are looking up for Yim. In the meantime, Lee starts to walk away. He is broken and humiliated. His own ego is driving him crazy and he cannot believe that Yim is now above him. Lee feels helpless and for that reason, he decides to end his own life. He climbs on top of a bridge and plans to jump. He wants to go back to sleep and never wake up again. Suddenly, his phone rings on the other side is Iltak. Iltak teases Lee for taking too long to recover. Iltak also tells Lee that Yim is way above him now, but there is something he can do. Iltak is now part of a much more dangerous gang, a new sort of criminal. This gang, of course, the notorious Hagwang, and they want Lee to join them. Lee decides that the only way he can live his life is if Lime dies once and for all. We see a dude running away from some members of the Hagwang. They are chasing after him for some reason. In the meantime, Yim goes to work in the pizza place. Things have been very quiet lately, and he is happy with that. 
He hopes that after he gets his revenge, he can spend more time with Nan and maybe live a normal life. When Yaim enters the pizza place, he sees the owner in an armed cast. He is worried that the Hagwine gang has come back, but the owner assures Yim that he just fell and broke his hand. He also tells Yim that he has hired a new worker to help out for the time being. Yim goes into the locker room and there he sees Nayan putting a new outfit on the worker. Yim gets jealous right away, but he tries to play it off cool. He meets the new worker. He is a young kid called Sumno, and he seems very nice. Sumno starts to work, but he is not the best. Yim has to teach him how to create the pizza dough, how to wash the dishes and serve the customers. Later, Sumno and Yim go outside and talk while they are on a break. Sumno admits that he plans to run away from home as his family and school life are horrible. Yim gives him some advice since he is also a runaway. He tells Sumno to be careful with that decision since living on the street is not really easy at all. The two talk and bond a bit. Tomorrow problems start right away, Yim is really jealous. Sumno has been able to learn all the important pizza work in just a day, and he is even better than Yim. Yim is insecure and he cannot understand how this young guy is so much better. He goes outside for a break when suddenly a guy tells him to hide him. He is running away from the Hagwang and he also lies and tells Yim that he is part of the Hangul fam. Of course, since Yim is a real member, he knows he is lying, but still he wants to beat up some members of the Hegwine. Soon two of them arrive and Yim does not hold back. He starts to fight them straight away. Yim is able to beat up the two thugs without any problem and they run away scared. He then talks with a dude who pretended to be part of Hangul fam. His name is Jung Inwen and he is also a runaway. Yim tells him to be honest, and if he lies again, he is going to get a royal beating. Jung explains that he is actually a former member of Hegwang. Yim from the start is aggressive towards him, he does not want to mess around with Hegwang. Jung then explains that he is a former member, and they betrayed him. He is also a runaway, but something happened in the past few weeks. Jung had a giant fight with his father and wanted to run away, he wanted to be a gangster more than anything. Then after some time, he realized that the life of a gangster is horrible, and that there is a lot of violence and blood. He wanted to return home, but had no way. Then his father was put on a list. It seems that the Hagwine gang has changed their approach, now they act as the mob. They take hits on people and then either beat them or worse. Jung tries to save his father, but his friends from Hagwang turned on him as well. He stole some of their money and ran away. We also learn that Yim actually saved Jung's father recently. Jung really wants to be reunited with his father, but he does not know how. Yim decides to help him. Jung is shocked at how kind Yim is. In the meantime, we see Chun once more, he is embarrassed and humiliated, but he wants to be back in the Hegwine. We are then introduced to his boss, Ba Gangrak. Gangrak tells Chun that he embarrassed the organization and did not follow orders. Gangrak then kicks Chun so hard he goes flying across the room, he then orders his men to get rid of Chun. Soon after, we are introduced to Han Jungmin, a man in a suit and glasses. He is an executive in Hagwang and he brings a new contract to Gangrak and his team. This time someone has put a hit on the entire Hamel fam, they want them dead. A rich high school kid has placed this target on them, and it's obvious that it's Lee. Jungmin also reveals that they have set a plan in motion, they have put a spy to infiltrate the group. We then see who the two possible spies are, it's either the runaway Jung or the nice pizza kid Sunho. Yoon joins both Sunho and Jung for dinner. They all sit together in the pizza place and talk about life experiences and about being runaway kids. Jung tells Sumbo to not run away from his family as that is a horrible decision. But if he does run away, he should join the powerful Ba Gangrak and his evil gang Hagwine. Yim tells Jung to shut up, but Jung thinks it's reasonable. The Hagwine might be a bunch of crazy people, but they are powerful, and they can keep a person safe. Yim thinks that Sumbo should not join any gang and that he should just stay with his family. Still, Yim wants to hear what happened to Sumbo that makes him want to leave his family so bad. Sumbo then starts to talk about his family life. He always had a nice family, but then his mother died. His father wanted to be a good parent and cared for Sungho. Soon his father got married to a nice lady who accepted Sungho as her son. It all changed when that lady gave birth to a new child. Now Sungho was just annoying and was not part of the family. His father still cares for him, but his stepmother is cruel and wants him out of the house. That is the reason Sungho wants to leave and wants to be free and allow his father to be happy. In that moment, Yim tells Sungho to stay as it's obvious that his father still cares for him. After dinner is over, they have some fun, and Yim goes back home. One of these two is a traitor, we know that, but we still don't know who is working for Ba Gangrak. We see a phone call, and the traitor talks with Ba Gangrak. Ba Gangrak gives him a clear order, he has to murder Yim at some point very soon. In the meantime, Yim goes back home to talk with his runaway fam. He tells Hangul and all the others that he needs their help. He wants to save Jung and Sungo. Hangul is not for this plan at all. He comments that those two could be very dangerous. 
Also, not every gang is nice like the runaway fam, so they have to be very careful. They cannot get involved in all conflicts as this could cause a lot of problems. That same night, Yim cannot stop thinking of a way to help Jung and Sung Ho. He cannot just leave them hanging. The following day, the trio decide to team up. They have to find out who put that bounty on Jung's father. Soon they realize there was a corrupt public official who has a similar job like Jung's father. This corrupt guy loves to go to criminal clubs. Yim, Sungo, and Jung also go into one of those clubs to find him. Soon they find his room there he is torturing and beating up some girls. The boys enter the room and start to beat up the corrupt guy. Suddenly, three giant dudes in suits arrive and Yim is now in serious trouble. Yim now realizes that he is in big trouble. These mobsters in the many club are no joke. They are brutal and fast, but one of them seems to be a total maniac. That is when we are introduced to that maniac, his name is Director Park. People who work with Director Park really are scared of him. He is notorious for being insane in fights and also it seems like he loves violence. There is also one distinct thing about Director Park, he hates young runaways. Director Park is now going head-to-head -head with Yim and the fight is brutal. Yim wants to protect Sungno and Jung from the other attackers as well so he tries his best. Sungno and Jung try to fight the other two but they are able to barely hold on. Sungno seems to shake out of fear. Jung really goes crazy and tries to take down the other fighter. In the meantime, there is a brutal fight between Park and Yim. Yim is sent flying across the room as Director Park hits him with a kick. Yim is now really injured but still he is in the fight. They start to just go crazy on each other, one punch after another. They are being brutal and violent. Director Park is an adult so he can take a lot more damage than Yim. Yim tries to do a couple of his moves but nothing works. Then he remembers his training with Hangul. One day, Yim and Hangul were sparring and Hangul showed off some of his raw power. For Yim that was too much but he wanted to learn how to take down someone who is way stronger than he is. Hangul explained that there are a few ways to do it. When a powerful hook punch does not work, there is another way out. The liver shot is something very dangerous but also useful in a fight. If you are able to hit your opponent in the liver, they will go down in one second with no problem. Now in the present, this is exactly what Yim does. He goes straight for the liver and Director Park is down for the count. He can barely breathe as he falls to the ground. Jung also realizes that Sunbu somehow took down his enemy in just seconds. Jung is surprised and so is Yim. Yim is shocked at how Sunbu is good at everything he does. Maybe Yim could start using his brain and figure out that something is wrong with Sunbo. The trio starts to interrogate the corrupt official now that everyone is taken out. Still, Director Park cannot let this one go. He gets up and breaks a beer bottle. He then charges at them. Sunbo in the last second pushes Yim out of the way. Yim realizes that he is covered in blood, but it's not his, it's from Sunbo. Yim and Joan are shocked to realize that Sunbo has been stabbed with a bare bottle in his back. Things got real, real fast. Sumdo is in shock and he falls to the ground. The beer bottle is straight up in his back. Jung is frozen in fear. He cannot believe what just happened. Things got serious real fast. Yim tries to get Jung to snap out of it and help Sumdo. Finally, Jung is able to move. Yim tells him to take Sumdo to the hospital right away while he will stay and investigate the corrupt official. Jung leaves while Yim just starts to brutally beat up the corrupt guy. Yim wants to know information and he wants it right away. Finally, because he is so afraid, the corrupt official reveals that Jung's father found out about his corruption and his plans. For that reason, he went to the evil gang and placed a hit on Jung's father. Now that Yim has this evidence, he wants to blackmail the corrupt official. Yim has a plan, they will go and talk with the main boss and the corrupt official will retract the bounty on Jung's father. The following day, Yim goes to visit Sungho in the hospital. Sungho seems to be recovering but his back still really hurts. Yim is worried about his new friend but he has no idea what's happening behind his back. At this point it's obvious that Sumlo is working for Ba Gangrak and feeding him information about Yim and the Hanul fam. Yim and Jung create a new plan, they will ambush the corrupt guy and then he will lead them to the mastermind and he will retract the offer. They capture the corrupt guy and he leads them into a forest. We see that Hangul has been following Yim around, he is worried about and decides to see where he is going just in case something bad happens. Yim. Jung and the corrupt guy go into the woods and there the corrupt guy has a meeting with Ba Gangrak, the main boss. The moment Yim spots Ba, he is frozen in fear. He realizes that this is someone he cannot fight head on, this is a monster. Ba Gangrak and the corrupt guy sit by the fire. The corrupt guy is nervous but he explains that he wants to retract the offer. Ba Gangrak tells him that he is going to have to pay anyway and also he tells him that he knows that Yim and Jung are hiding in the woods. In that moment, Yim realizes that this was a trap all along. Someone was giving information to Ba Gangrak and that someone must have been Sung Ho. Yim and Jung are now in serious trouble. Several bikers rush them from all sides. Bait Gangrak wants them dead, so he orders his gangsters to take them down. 
Jung and Myim start to fight back against the bikers. They have to be fierce and fast. Jung and Myim start to throw rocks at the bikers and it actually works. Some of the bikers go flying off their bikes as the rocks hit the tires. Jung gets knocked out in the fight since there are a lot of enemies all around them. Yim keeps going but soon realizes that this plan has failed. He has to reach that corrupt official to use him in the future. Yim runs towards that guy but suddenly a shovel flies into the ground. Yim is now face to face with Ba Gangrak. Gangrak looks like a tower, his eyes are dead and his face is serious. He has a simple outfit but everything about him is scary. Yim realizes that this person is unlike anyone he has ever faced before. This is too much. Now Yim has to fight Ba Gangrak, there is no other choice. Ba laughs at him, this is just fun and games for him. He does not take Yim seriously at all. Still Ba Gangrak has heard rumors about Yim so he is a bit impressed. Still he knows that this is a fight he already won. Yim tries his best, he really does, but it does not matter. He tries to get Ba, but it's no use. Ba Gangrak hits him so hard that Yim goes flying into a nearby tree. Ba Gangrak wants to break Yim and it's obvious that he is no regular street fighter, his fights all end in death for his enemy. Then Ba Gangrak just touches his leg and almost snaps it in half. Basically at this point, Yim is just dodging and trying to stay alive, but it's not going that well. Ba Gangrak then grabs Yim by the face and starts to carry him to the nearby fire. Gangrak will now do to Yim the same thing that Hangul did to Chun. Yim is afraid, he realizes that this might be the end. He remembers Naeum, his runaway fam, and all the things he wants to do. Gangrak places his head near the fire and in that moment Yim snaps. Yim grabs some of the burning wood and he slaps Gangrak with it in the face. While he tries to run away, Yim screams that he still has to live so that he can run to the pizza place. This is his endgame. Ba Gangrak is not going to let him go that easy. He hits him with one punch and now Yim cannot stand anymore. Still Gangrak is impressed with Yim, so he offers him a chance to join his evil gang. If Yim wants to join, he has to murder someone else and bury them. Soon the other gangsters bring Director Park, a gangster who got into a fight with Yim in the nightclub. Gangrak tells Yim that it's either him who is going to die tonight, or this guy on the ground. He gives him a shovel and tells him to get to work. Yim of course does not want to be that person, he does not want to be a villain. He tells Gangrak to show him his offer and that he is never going to be like him. Gangrak then just knocks out Yim in one hit. Yim is then placed into a large hole of dirt and slowly they bury him. He starts to have flashes of his entire life and realizes that maybe it's all coming to an end. In that moment our favorite savior arrives, it's Cho Hamil. Yim is so happy to see his old friend and mentor. He realizes that he gets a chance to live another day. Hangul is all chill as always and helps Yim out. Yim is shocked by what just happened and he tries to search for Jung and realizes that he is also okay. Hangul explains that he got worried about Yim and realized that he is in some serious trouble. For that reason, Hangul followed him then beat up some nearby gangsters and then was finally able to save his life in the last second. The problem is that the man they were trying to blackmail, the one who put the hit on Jung's father, is also gone. Suddenly some gangsters arrive and they try to attack Hangul. This is always a horrible idea. Hangul breaks them apart without even trying. In fighting them, he says one of the most baddest lines ever. Have you ever been kissed by a foot? He says that line while hitting someone in the head with his, you guessed it, foot. Soon all the gangsters are done for and Yim tries to get some information out of them. Basically Ba Gangrak took that businessman and left. Hangul is actually worried the moment he hears the name Gangrak. He knows this is now serious. Hangul then grabs one of the gangsters and gives him a new order. He is going to tell his bosses that Yim is actually dead in the hole. The criminal is scared since he does not want to be punished by his bosses. Hangul then throws him into the hole and tells him that if he does not listen to him, he is going to get buried alive. Jung, Hangul, and Yim go get some food together and they talk about this entire situation. Jung really wants to save his father but now he realizes that it's much more dangerous. Yim still promises to help him no matter what. Yim truly cares about his fellow runaways and he wants to help Jung reunite with his father. Hangul and Yim go talk alone. Hangul explains the situation and basically tells Yim to stop all of this. Hangul tells him that he cannot fight Ba Gangrak no matter what, he just cannot get involved. If Hangul gets involved, then everything is ruined and war will break out. Yim realizes that this is pretty serious, but still he is conflicted. He does not want to just leave Jung alone with no help. Yim then brings up the fact that Hangul did not need to help him, but he did. That is what Yim wants to be for Jung. Hangul admires Yim, but tells him once again that he will not be involved. He tells Yim to do whatever he wants, but on this one, he cannot count on Hangul to save him. The following day, we see Yim chilling on the roof and he calls Sunho. He wants to see how Sunmo is doing and it seems that Sunmo is still in the hospital. Still at this point, it's obvious that Sunmo is actually working for Ba Gangrak and the villains. 
Sungbo wants to find out as much information as he can, but soon Kim, one of the runaway fam members, arrives on the roof. Right away, Kim starts to hit Yim. Yim is totally confused, but then Kim explains that he has to start his training right away. Soon enough, each member of the runaway fam is on the roof, and they all get ready to fight Yim. Yim is now freaking out, but this friend explains that he has to be able to fight all of them to fight someone like Ba Gangrak. After the fight with Ba Gangrak, Hangul and Kim Tak had a talk about Yim. Hangul revealed that Yim really wants to fight someone like Ba alone. Both Hangul and Kim laugh at the idea. Still, Hangul then got serious for a moment and told Kim Tak to deal with this new situation that is happening with Yim. He has to learn. Hangul tells Kim to teach him a lesson since Yim has forgotten how dangerous these criminals he is fighting truly are. The following morning, we see that Kim Tak has shown up on the roof with the entire runaway fam. Yim is shocked by the idea of him fighting all of them alone. He explains that there is no chance he can do that. Then Kim drops the bombshell. Fighting all of them together is much easier than fighting Ba Gangrak alone. This means that Yim is nowhere near the power level he needs to be for any of these serious fights. Kim Tak sets the rules of this battle. Yim will fight each member of the runaway family. If he can beat just one of them, then he can maybe challenge Ba to a fight. The first round is against Gaon from the start. Yim does not want to fight her since she's his friend and also a girl. Gaon does not have any mercy, and she starts to hit Yim right in the face. He's able to defend himself, but the pain is way too great. Since Yim does not want to hit Gaon, he decides to pull out one of her moves. He grabs her legs and tries to drag her to the ground. The only problem is that Gaon is really good at wrestling, so for her, this is a piece of cake. She grabs Yim and slams him to the ground and the round is over. Yim now realizes how weak he really is. The next round is against Hasunbin. He's a great boxer. Sunbin tells Yim to give up since there is no point. Yim does not think he has to hold back with Sunbin, so he's a bit more confident. Yim starts to get Sunbin, but all his punches totally miss. Sunbin is so good at boxing that his power and speed are insane. He's able to knock out Yim in just a few hits with no issue. Now it's time for the third round. This time it's against Kim Tak, he still has his hand in a cast since he was injured in that previous fight. Still Kim is confident and Yim feels a lot of fear. He realizes that Kim is just another level totally different than him. Yim tries to throw a few punches but they do nothing. Then it's time for Kim, he is a very masterful kickboxer so with one leg kick he sends Yim flying into the air and the fight is over before it even started. The final round is against Che Deyub who is really fantastic in judo. Yim tries to fight him, but in just a few movements from Judo, Dayab takes down Yim with no problem. Yim realizes in that moment that he is no match for any of them and he is just putting his runaway fam in danger. Still, Yim is not ready to give up and he wants to talk with Kim Tak about this. For the time being, Yim will not attack Ba Gangrak, but he wants to get trained by them and get stronger. He wants to one day be on their level and then take down Ba Gangrak. In that moment, Kim remembers the conversation he had with Hangul. Hangul explained that he cannot join in this fight against Ba Gangrak, but he wants the others to defeat him. They have to get stronger, but they stand a chance. We talked about Yim joining this fight. Hangul commented that Yim has a fighting spirit, he just needs training and Kim has to test him. This whole little tournament was that test and Yim has passed. Kim and the others promise to train him in the most brutal way and prepare him for the fight. Yim proclaims that after he gets revenge, he will not allow anyone else to get bullied and ignored like he did. Then comes a shocking revelation, Hangul shows up and reveals to Yim that either Jung or Sun Tho is working for Ba Gangrak. In the meantime, we see Ba Gangrak meeting with the traitor, their face is covered in shadow, but they comment how they are so done pretending and they just want to murder everyone in the runaway family. Yim cannot believe that one of his two new friends is a traitor, then Hangul shows him some evidence. A few days ago, Hangul noticed that someone was spying on them he was part of that evil gang that works for Ba Gangrak. Hangul captured this gangster and questioned him a bit. He found out some juicy details, one of them being that Ba Gangrak knows that Yim is alive. Now at that moment, Hangul realized that something is wrong, he scared those guys and ordered them to lie and tell Ba Gangrak that Yim is dead. So how did they get the information that Yim is actually alive? It's very clear that either Young or Sun Tho is working for Ba Gangrak and giving him information. Yim is still shocked but he realizes that on the street you cannot trust anyone and he has to feel into a trap just cause he wanted to help someone. Hangul also explains that Yim seems to be a very important target for the evil gang, and they want him gone. Suddenly Yim's phone rings and it's Jung. Jung wants to keep searching for his father and he needs Yim to help. Yim ignores the call as he does not know who to trust anymore, he feels betrayed and lost. In the meantime, Ba Gangrak and his men are torturing Jung's father, they want him to also be corrupt and steal some money for them. The father does not want to do that so Ba Gangrak tortures him. 
Bog Gangrak throws him into the water where he almost drowns. After that, he promises him that he's going to hunt down his son and punish him as well. Bog Gangrak goes to talk with one of the executives of the gang. They are not pleased with the results. Yin was supposed to be dead long ago and so was Hangul. Bog Gangrak realizes that Hangul is a major problem and he has to work around him since he is too dangerous. Still, Bog Gangrak has a plan to finish them all off, but we then find out that there is someone above him, a true leader and master. This person is still not getting involved, so there are no direct orders yet. Suddenly, other gangsters arrive with some insane news. It seems that the Runaway fam has attacked the base. We see Yim and the whole crew attack the base of operations, and they start attacking everyone without any mercy. The Runaway fam is bringing the fight to Bog Gangrak. The Runaway fam found out the plans for the entire building, and now they are taking down everyone. Bog Gangrak does not seem to be worried at all. It's like he wanted this to happen. He calls a meeting with the executives of the gang and invites them all to come. He plans to murder every member of the Hangul group today. Yim is fighting with all his might, the others are also going crazy. They are taking down countless gangsters at the same time without any issue. They have three levels to the building and they have to climb the stairs and fight their way up to find Ba Gangrak and finally stop him. They are fighting several enemies at the same time, also these gangsters have baseball bats and knives. Still Yim and the others are holding up. Yim is so proud to be fighting side by side with his new family. Suddenly, they are faced with two new enemies, they are called Choi and Lee Paul. These two psychos are ultra-fast, they are also on the power level of Chu. Ba Gangrak sent them so that they can murder every member of the runaway fam. They start to fight and right away it's obvious that they are strong. Still, Yim shows off what he learned and with one powerful kick, he almost knocks out Choi. Yim wants to prove himself, he wants to show everyone in the runaway fam that they can count on him. Yim has not only evolved his fighting style, but he is learning new skills while fighting new enemies. Kim is really impressed as he sees Yim use various moves from all members of the runaway fam and also using moves from enemies he has faced in the past. Yim is now on equal ground with his family members and he is going crazy. That little scared kid is now gone and we have a badass fighter. Chua cannot believe they got knocked out, but he starts to fight with Yim. Yim is able to keep up and they start to exchange punches. In the meantime, Lee Paul is fighting the other guys, he has a knife and he is really fast. He starts to slash people and then he runs away. Kim starts to fight him but Lee Paul is really skilled with his knife. Finally, he has enough and he slashes Kim on his cast. Lee Paul then tells Kim that he is not in the mood to fight him anymore. He is tired and bored and only doing this because Ba Gangrak told him to waste time. In that moment, Kim realizes something very problematic. Other execs from the gang are coming down to this base of operations. Execs are basically the most lethal people in this gang and they will overrun the runaway fam. Lee Paul starts to rush away as Kim goes after him. Kim gathers Yim and Dayab and they go to the third floor. Hassan Bin and Gaon are left fighting all those criminals on the second floor. Kim tells the others that they have to hurry as their time is very limited. Kim knows that if they don't defeat Gangrak fast, they will get murdered for sure. Soon they get to a door and Yim is blasted back as Ba Gangrak comes out of the door, ready to take them down. Yim then gets up and promises to not get defeated a second time. Both Tak and Dayab realize that Ba Gangrak is no ordinary fighter. He is a level above all of them. Kim now knows that there is a time limit. The other lethal execs are coming soon, and if they don't hurry, they are dead meat. Right away, Yim and Dayab start to tag team Gangrak. He is a giant, but he moves like a dancer. He is able to counter their moves without a problem. Dayab tries to do a judo move, but it does not work at all on Gangrak, who is unmovable, it seems. Still, since it's two on one, they are able to get in a few good hits. Right away, Yim lands a solid punch on the scary giant. Han Jungmin, the guy in the suit and glasses, is facing off against Kim Tak. Han tells him very clearly that their entire plan is doomed from the start. The other execs will soon arrive and today they all end. Still, Kim wants to fight, but then suddenly he realizes a change in his energy. Han Jungmin takes off his suit and we see giant muscles and crazy tattoos on his hands. It seems that while he looks like just a regular business guy, he is actually lethal in combat. The battle starts and right away Han shows off his insane power. With powerful leg kicks, he injures Kim straight away. Kim has already been injured, but this is a lot. Still, he explains that he and his runaway fam have been training for a while and they are ready for this. In that moment, Han starts to make fun of Kim and his plan. He left Gaeyang and has Sungbin to fight countless enemies on the second floor. They are obviously the weaker members and they will soon die a very painful death. Han tells Kim that he made a giant mistake coming here and his friends are going to suffer forever. We see that Gaeyang and Hei Sunbin are attacked by countless enemies with all sorts of weapons. Gaeyang is going crazy with her wrestling moves, but she cannot handle five people attacking her at the same time. She gets injured badly, but still she can fight. 
Then comes the reveal, the most hilarious thing that none of the execs from the evil gang knew. Kim grabs Han by the leg and starts a counterattack. Kim is fast and his leg kicks it like tree trunks. Then he tells Han a little secret. Han previously mentioned that Kim and Dayab are probably the strongest members and yet they will lose. In that moment, Kim reveals that they are not the strongest members at all. After Hangul, the strongest member of the group is by far Hasunbin. Hasunbin is usually a very quiet and chill guy, he loves boxing and he is a great fighter. In most fights, he is pulling back and just having some fun. Kim reveals that when he loses control, when he gets serious, he becomes a monster like no other. We then see about 10 guys running at Hasunbin at the same time. He starts to move and he is like the wind. He knocks all of them in about 3 seconds without even trying. Everyone is now scared and it's obvious that Hasunbin is going to murder all of them. Hasunbin is now fighting both Choi and that Lee Paul guy with the knives. Both of them are super strong, but Ho Sunbin is just on a whole different level. He literally starts to coach and explain moves to Choi while he beats him up. Choi is done in a few punches at most. Lee Paul, on the other hand, has some moves, and especially with his knife, he is very dangerous. He starts to slash at Ho Sunbin, who now has to dodge and protect his hands while he fights. Still, Ho Sunbin is not slowing down, and actually, he is getting more angry by the second. Lee Paul has no idea what trouble he has gotten himself into. In the meantime, Dayab and Yim are both fighting Ba. The fight is brutal, and no matter how many punches they throw, it does nothing to Ba. Ba is like a wall, and they are like little flies hitting it. Finally, Yim remembers a lesson he had with Hangul. Yim was training with the sandbags, and Hangul came up to help him. Yim wanted to know how to defeat someone really large. Hangul decided to show him one clever move that is very dangerous. Yim tells Dayo that he just needs time and for him to hold down Ba. Yim has an idea, and the two start to pull it off. Dayob starts to hit Ba one-on-one, -on -one and it's brutal. Dayob is totally covered in blood, but he keeps going. Yim prepares for his hit, but Dayob is not able to hold down Ba. Ba hits Dayob really hard, and also using a leg kick makes Yim fly across the room. Still, Dayob is not giving up, he grabs Ba by the legs. This gives Yim time to pull off his finishing move. Yim flies through the air, and with a knee kick to the head, finally takes down Ba. Yim is now ready to just unleash a series of hits on this monster. Now that Ba is on the ground, it's time for the finishing touches. Yim jumps on him and then places himself in the perfect position for an armbar. This move is something that Hangul taught him and it's very deadly. Basically, Yim starts to snap Ba's arm. Ba screams and tries to break free, but Yim hits him over and over with his legs. Finally, the arm breaks and Yim is certain that the fight is over. Kiv is so proud of him, but then Han explains that Ba is not going to go down so easily. Han makes fun of Kim for thinking his group will ever be able to match the power of Ba and Han. Han tells Kim that today, the runaway fam ends forever. We then see that while Ba has a broken hand, he lifts up Yim and starts to smash him on the ground. Yim cannot believe what is happening, Ba is moving totally normally even with a broken arm. Yim gets thrown into a room and there he spots Jung's father all tied up in some water where they were torturing him. Yim realizes that Jung was not the spy. Ba arrives and he wants to finish Yim and end his life. He puts him inside the water and starts to drown him. Still, Yim is not about to give up, he pulls another armbar on the other hand. He might die, but he is going to take that other hand with him. Hassan Bin is still fighting Lee Paul. While Hassan Bin is way stronger, his body has been injured with the knife slashes. He's trying to defend Gaon, who was on the ground badly injured. Lee Paul starts to make fun of her and all the members of the Hamel fam. Hassan Bin now gets really pissed. He was a nobody, a lost soul on the street, and the Hamel family found him. They gave him a home and love. Hasunbin will do literally anything for them and no matter how bad his injuries are, he is going to defend his family. He charges at Lee Paul like a train. In the meantime, Kim and Han are having a brutal fight. Kim is losing badly, his arm is busted up, and his body is injured almost to the point of not being able to move anymore. Han is not holding back anything he truly wants to end Kim in his life. He is just punching and punching him over again. Suddenly, Han gets hit so hard he flies across the room, his chest hurts badly from the punch. Hasunbin has finally arrived on the third floor. Lee Paul looks like a fold-up chair and Hasunbin is bleeding all over the place. No matter if he is ready to get into the fight, both Hasunbin and Han tear up their shirts and charge at each other. While that is happening, Yim is still trying to break Ba's arm while he is being drowned. Finally, Jung's father tries to help Yim. Ba starts to beat up the father, but then Yim hits him with a wooden bat. Yim is now all smiles, Ba is bleeding, and the fight is just getting started. Han starts to make fun of Hassan Bin and we learn that they have some shared history. It seems that Han has been a horrible gangster for many years and he met Hassan Bin when he was just a kid and did horrible things to him. 
Now it's time for Hasunbin to get his revenge. Kim has never seen Hasunbin this angry. Han and Sungbin charge at each other and start an insane fight. In the meantime, Ba and Liam are going crazy at each other. Ba is hitting Yim with all he got. Yim is covered in blood but still in the fight. He notices that his arm bars have had an effect. Ba is hurting his arms and his strikes are getting sloppy. Yim thinks that he has a way to finish this fight. He uses all the skills that Hangul explained to him. He hits Ba with a liver shot and then goes for his head. Ba is really hurting Yim and Do. He is pretending to be all powerful. Still, Yim is not that strong as Ba grabs him once more and starts to use a chromar on him. The beating is brutal and Yim can no longer move. Jung's father tries to stop Ba, but then he gets a beating as well. Yim remembers what Hangul told him about friendship and family, what it means to be on the streets together. Yim gets up once more and he stops Ba. Ba is shocked and Yim tells him that the fight is not over just yet. We learn more about Hisumbin and what Han did to him. Sumbin was an orphan, but he lived in an orphanage that was run by a kind woman. She was the director and she truly cared about the kids. Sumbin loved being there, but he wanted more as any little kid. One day, he ran away and wanted to live on the street. Sumi wanted to return home, but he saw Han murder someone. Han wore no shirt and had horrible dragon tattoos on him. He's always been a killer. Han wanted to end his son Bin right there, but the small child begged for mercy. After Han found out about the orphanage, he went there and trashed the entire place while torturing people and taking money. In the battle, the kind director died and the orphanage was later closed. Ha Sungbin tried to get revenge, but he was a small kid. Han just brutally beat him and told him to get used to losing. Now in the present, we understand why this fight is so personal for Ha Sungbin. Both Han and start to hit each other so many times that Kim cannot understand how they are moving that fast. Dayob is also there and he is worried about Ha Sungbin. The fight goes on and on, Han is now using all his strength. Ha Sungbin is losing a lot of blood, but still he is fighting. Han starts to hit him in all the vital spots and prepares to finish him off. Han is full of himself and a true psycho. Han hits Ha Sungbin right in the head, it's a lethal hit. For some reason Ha Sungbin does not go down. He remembers Hangul saving his life and creating a new family with all the runaway members. Ha Sungbin has a new family to fight for and he is not going to let Han take that away. Like a crazy person Ha Sungbin takes that hit and then hits Han so hard that he goes flying in the air and then crashes into the ground. Ha Sungbin stands proudly with his new family and he tells Han that he is never losing again. Han is out cold, his jaw totally broken. We return to the Ba of his Yim fight. Both guys can barely see as their eyes and face is covered in blood. Ba has injured hands and Yim is barely standing. Still Ba is like a truck and he keeps coming. Yim just motivates himself to keep hitting. Blow after blow, kick after brutal kick. These two are going all the way. The entire time Ba keeps thinking about what Yim told him about his runaway family. Ba was young once and he also imagined that he is going to find a family in the streets. For a while he was happy, but those people betrayed him. He then met the main boss of the Hagwang and he started to live a life of pure crime. Now Ba does not believe in any of this family crap, there is no friendship and family in the streets. Yim does not agree with that as they fight. Yim realizes that his hand is also broken so Ba has an opening to kick him straight in the face. The two talk one final time, Yim asks Ba if he has any family here in the streets. Ba once again shouts at him to stop talking about family. Yim feels sorry for him, but it's time to finish the fight. Yim uses his environment, he splashes water in Ba's eyes and then plans to hit him with a crowbar. Ba is confident but soon realizes that he has been grabbed by Hasumbin, Dayab, and Kim. Yim's family has arrived to help him. Yim uses the crowbar and with one precise hit, he finally takes down Ba. Ba is now on the ground covered in blood and he is totally knocked out. The beast has been taken down. Yim and all his boys just fall to the ground, their bodies are totally ruined. They are happy that they were finally able to take down Ba. Yim then realizes that Jung's father is not in the room with them anymore. Yim is worried about him. He starts to run all over the place trying to find him. Yim then asks one of the gang members about Jung's father and he finds out that someone kidnapped him. Yim tries to run after that old man and he feels so bad. Jung was not the spy he trusted Yim and Yim did not help him. Yim wants to save his father as fast as possible. The only problem is that his entire body is broken down and he can barely walk. Yim actually falls down some stairs as he is that weak. Finally, he arrives at the parking lot and at first it seems to be empty. Then he spots a familiar face, it's Sumno. In that moment, Yim realizes that this entire time the friendly pizza guy Sumno has been the sky. Still, Yim tries to pretend to be cool and he asks Sumno where Jung is but Sumno has no answer. Sumno is still pretending to be friendly and nice but for some reason he walks behind Yim. It's obvious that Sumno is planning a surprise attack. Finally, Yim has had enough and he hits Sumho. 
Sunbo is able to put up his guard in time and he teases Yim for being weak. Yim is sad that Sunbo turned out to be a traitor, but he is more than a spy. Sumno is actually an exec in the evil gang, and he is much, much stronger than he presented himself. Yim tries to hit Sumno, but none of his hits land. While he's injured, he realizes that Sumno is just on a whole other level. Sumno is just pure evil, and he is actually stronger than Ba. Yim still does not want to give up, he has to save Jung's father. Sumno just toys around with Yim, and he makes fun of him. Soon Jung arrives and tries to help, but he is also brutally beaten. Sumno is just that dominant. Yim realizes that they don't stand a chance, but he still does not want to back down. He keeps striking at Sumno, but it does not work. For every weak punch that Yim throws, Sumno returns a more lethal and powerful leg kick. Sumno then tells Yim that he should just give up. He explains that there are very few stronger than Sumno in the streets, he is that powerful. In that moment, someone comes flying in with a kick. Sumno is hit so hard that he flies into a nearby car and crashes into it. Hangul has arrived and he tells Sumno that he is that guy, he is the one stronger than him. Hangul praises Yim for everything he has done. Hangul explains that things have changed and now he is going to get involved. Sumno starts to laugh at Hangul and warns him to stop or it will be war. Hangul then comments that since he is the strongest, he can do whatever he wants. Hangul arrives and without any problem, he starts to fight Sumgo. Yim realizes that Sumno was not lying and he has insane power. The problem is that Hangul is just on a whole different level. Hangul starts to get serious and he brutalizes Sumho with no problem. Sumho gets scared as he realizes that he might die in this fight. He tries to create some peace talks but Hangul hits him once more. Hangul reveals that he went to talk with the boss of Hei Wang and peace is out of the question or is coming. Sumho is able to escape and the battle is over for now. Yim is happy that Jung has been reunited with his father and that they managed to pull out another victory. Still, there is something that is bothering everyone. How did Hamul know to contact Hei Wang and their leader? When they return home, they all try to heal and talk. Hangul then drops the bombshell on everyone. He reveals his darkest secret. Hegwang was created by Hangul originally. Everyone in the group is shocked by hearing this. Their beloved friend and leader also created the most evil gang in the town. Hangul explains that he created this gang with his former best friend Shin Wusun. They just wanted to have a normal gang, but Shin started to act insane, and he did more and more horrible things. Hangul left the gang and wanted to live a happy and free life. Still, there is part of Hangul that feels sad that he lost his best friend. In the meantime, we see that Hangul went to talk with the second in command, Nam Wuching, a few days ago. He also talked with the boss, but we do not see that. Basically, there is no more peace between Hangul and Shin. We are then introduced to some low level thugs. They are served some food by a man with long black hair. He seems nice as he serves food for homeless people. These two start to talk about plans to join a gang and do evil things. The man with black hair invites them back into a dark room. They enter confused and soon the mood changes. They are put in front of several horrible gang members and they have to murder an innocent man on the ground. The man with black hair has a sinister expression on his face and he forces them to commit murder. He then allows them to become part of his evil gang. In that moment we learn that this mysterious man, this force of evil is actually Shin Wusum, the leader of Heiwan. Shin dresses in all black and he is like a monster from the shadows. He gathers all his men and he is smiling thinking about his upcoming war with Hangul. We are introduced to a church pastor called O Jang. He is talking to two girls from the street and he offers them shelter, but on one condition. They are going to have to do horrible things and work for that Ho Wang gang. The girl rejects this, they do not want to be sold and just be objects, they know that it's going to be horrible. The pastor starts to scream at them and orders them to listen to him, otherwise he is going to kick them out. It's revealed that this pastor actually works for Shin and his evil gang. Shin has his secret base in this church and he works with others there, this is their main base. Soon a man called Lee Yoon Hak enters the room, he is pretty calm. The moment Lee enters the room, the pastor is nervous and scared. Lee Yoon Hak goes to talk with the girls and at first he is nice. He asks them if they have been friends for a long time. The girls calm down a bit but then comes the plot twist. Lee Yoon Hak tells them that one of them is going to be free to go but he is going to beat the other to death. He starts to hit one of the girls without any mercy. The other girl is now crying and she is afraid for herself and her friend. She begs Lee Yoon-hak to stop and then he orders them to be silent and to listen to the pastor no matter what. They are now the property of the gang. Lee Yoon-hak is actually one of the top execs of the gang. He goes through a secret meeting that Shin is leading. Samno is also there and some other execs. They are all talking about this new situation. They are angry at Shin for allowing Hangul and his family to beat on their execs and partners. They have ruined their operation too many times. Shin is totally relaxed and actually for him this is all great fun. 
He tells the rest that he is certain that Hangul is very worried at this moment. A week goes by and the runaway fam are all having pizza in the restaurant. Jung is now working there and he is living a much better life. The entire crew is there having fun and eating some food. They are all still injured but they are having fun. Still some of them are worried about the Eagle Gang and if they are going to come for them. Hangul in the meantime is very serious and sad. He is not eating his food and for the past few days he has been acting very odd. After the group finishes their meal, they all walk back home. Yim is loving it, he loves laughing and spending time with his new family. They are all having a lot of fun. Except for Hangul. He is never this serious or quiet, but something is bothering him. The group comes up with an idea that will all take a group photo to have as a memory. Hangul at first does not want to go if they force him. After the photo is done, everyone gets a copy. When Hangul sees the photo, he gets emotional, he loves every member of his little crazy family and he wants to protect them. That same night, Hangul is out smoking when Kim Tak comes to talk with him. Hangul very rarely smokes, so something is for sure bothering him. Kim wants to know if anything is wrong, but Hangul does not reveal anything. Hangul then asks Kim how long they have known each other and how long has Yim been in the group. We then learn the real problem here. When Hangul went to meet with the evil gang, he got an ultimatum. Basically, Lee, that crazy bully who harassed Yim, has hired the gang to murder Yim. The gang's main goal this entire time has been Yim, and they wanted Hangul to give him to them. They give Hangul an ultimatum, either his entire gang dies or only Yim. Hangul then rejected the offer and basically now everyone is in danger. Hangul now sits on the roof alone and thinks about this decision. He feels conflicted, but also he wants to protect Yim. This is all too much, but he has to protect his family. Hangul has reached a decision, and it's going to be a very dangerous road ahead for everyone. He tears up the photo and then leaves. We see that Lee is begging the evil gang to finally end Yim. He is the little bastard that hired the gang. He is angry that they have still not destroyed Yim. He starts to rage, but then the second in command shows up. His name is Nam Wanching. He tells Lee to calm down and be patient, otherwise he is also going to end up like Yim. A few days go by, Hangul keeps thinking about his decision. He does not know what to do and how to protect his family. He asks the other members a weird question. He asks them how would they feel if Yim was gone. While they all have problems sharing their emotions, it's obvious that they care for Yim. Hangul is very quiet, he even does the dishes, which surprises everyone. Later in the day, he goes back to the first place he met Yim and thinks about that. Yim was just getting brutally beaten. Hangul thinks it's silly that he always gets involved with saving someone, but he just cannot help himself. After thinking for a while, he finally reaches his decision. He goes to the church where Nam Wancheng waits for him with the entire gang. In the meantime, his family is pretty worried about Hangul. Yim goes outside and finds the ripped photo and realizes that something is happening. Hangul ripped himself from the family photo. Hangul now tells Nam Wancheng to bring him Sin, and he tells everyone that he is not giving up Yim or his family. Hangul is now prepared for his final battle. He is going to take on the entire gang by himself.